Okay team, so now we're going to learn about the uh, all the steps that it takes to get from the activation of the innate immune response, or our first line of defense, all the way down to the adaptive immune response, which includes things like our killer T cells, or cytotoxic lymphocytes, and our B cells, which produce the antibody. And as you can see from all of this info behind me, there are a lot of different parts we've got to go over to understand the big picture. And so we're gonna break this up into little bits. So first we're gonna look at the very first part about what happens when a PAMP, like the flagella of a bacteria, binds to a pattern recognition receptor on an antigen-presenting cell like a macrophage. Now, you're probably pretty lost if you haven't checked out the previous videos. So make sure you check out all the videos on PAMPs, what are antigens, um, and the basics of cell signaling. Because as you're going to see, the immune response is all about cell signaling. So you've really got to understand those basics before you move forward. Okay, first, let's move to the general picture of what's happening. And I'm gonna talk back here. Okay. So here we are. Um, we started out learning before about, here's our antigen presenting cell, which in this example is a macrophage, but remember it could also be a dendritic cell or a B cell in some cases. And up there, I've shown our example of a PAMP, which is the flagella of a bacterium. And the PAMP is going to dock or be found by a pattern recognition receptor on the macrophage. And we went over the last time what steps happen after that, but briefly, um, there are two big actions that are gonna happen once the PAMP binds to the PRR. And one is that this macrophage and other APCs are gonna produce immune signals. And these immune signals are called cytokines. And they do lots of different things. And I put a, a different things. They tell the macrophage to divide. They tell it um, the immune signals uh, help to recruit more innate immune cells, more macrophages, DCs. Um, it also can travel up to the brain and have physiological impacts like causing fever, swe swelling, chills, sweats. Um, these are all signs of inflammation. Um, so yeah, these immune signals can lead to inflammation. Uh, so back up here. So the other thing, the other leg that happens after PAMP binds to PRR is that we have endocytosis, which is similar to phagocytosis but it's bringing in of the pathogen inside the cell into a specialized compartment called the endosome. Inside this compartment, the um, pathogen is broken down into all these little bits, and these are all the different antigens that we could have. So I've shown here, step number four, is that one particular antigen, and we're gonna call it antigen number one, is loaded onto a receptor called MHC. And this stands for major histocompatibility complex, which you don't have to memorize that part. But we want to know that there are two major classes of MHCs. And the ones that are found on antigen-presenting cells, as we've shown here, are the class 2 MHC. Okay, so class 2 MHC only found on antigen-presenting cells. So what happens is the antigen gets loaded onto the MHC class 2, and it's this combination of MHC class two plus antigen number one that activates helper T cells. So, and this is through a direct binding of your helper T cells um, to the MHC class two plus antigen number one combination. So we have a direct activation of helper T cells. So that's our first part of um, how, and how macrophages and dendritic cells present antigens via MHC class II receptors and how they activate helper T cells. Next, let's do just a review. Um, next, let's actually, we're gonna show how uh, the antigen presenting cells are gonna activate the helper T cells and what happens in the next step.